Good morning, folks. Lots to cover today. We begin with calm near Earth space. Calm magnetosphere last time we talked, then the CME impacts began. The first shockwave arrived at 2300 UTC last night or about 7 p.m. Eastern Time, ramping the solar wind density, speed, and plasma temperature above ambient quiet levels. Earth Shield did its primary job and kept too much plasma from penetrating into the system, but it took a beating doing so. And indeed, Earth was in a multi-hour geomagnetic storm at the lowest level. Reverberations may continue today in addition to the larger shockwave due any minute now. Should ramp the speed even higher in yellow and produce larger geomagnetic storms. Earth is still in a radiation storm at the poles, still just at level 1. Meanwhile, we took two small M flares yesterday in a waning X-ray trend. They came from the limb top left with a corresponding pop down south departing. The sunspots are noticeably weaker. The X-flare maker in the north is highly morphed from its primary eruption. Iris captured the surge, sending the penumbral surroundings into the umbral core of the sunspot here. Absolutely beautiful. Meanwhile, down south the deltas are decaying. And we're getting our first look at the M-Flare makers from yesterday on the north as well. Great links today. If you didn't see this volcano erupt in PNG, it's worth a look with sound so you can hear the boom. I also recommend NASA's latest on how they map the wind of hurricanes and tropical storms. We've got a new map for Rosetta's Comet as they zero in on a landing site. The August State of the Climate Report is issued for the United States with another solid mix of both above and below average temperatures. It appears this was indeed a wetter month than we've seen as well. But the top two links you'll find below are our own. The first is at the blog run by David Hyde, featuring a new article written by one of the most prolific contributors to the comment section, Hook Echo. His real name and a darn good space weather earthquake article can be found there. Speaking of David Hyde, he and I have our second article published in New Dawn magazine this month, this one on the space weather influence over human health and behavior. This publication has been very good to our community. So we're in the West Pacific looking for tropical development and earth spot quakes. The system is strengthening and about to cross the Philippines. Regional uptick in seismicity on its heels. In the Atlantic, the named storm is still way out to sea, but the worrisome gulf threat still looms and is just a touch north of an above average rumble in the Dominican Republic as well. Here's the scene in the West Pacific, two systems of note, about the usual here in terms of storm tracks. Let's quickly eye the convergence line in the United States, shifting east and south a bit. Its flood warnings are actually once more due to moisture shifting up from the Pacific tropical storms, and NOAA once again missing the yellow severe alert along the line to the northeast. I'd again recommend more caution in those areas. Lows in Europe? Fairly easy to notice. The drive on the wind and cloud formations for the ones still out in the Atlantic are absolutely phenomenal. The storm zones there tonight are a direct result of the two systems. Convergence line down under is actually east with the Kiwis. You'll get the brunt of it this evening. Bigger CME impact expected soon. Check out those links below the video. Shots of our star to close at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.15 a.m. Local. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.